What's up, PlayStation Universe? This is Senior Editor Kyle Prawl, bringing you another Fallout 4 settlement video. Now, what I want to do with this one and the next few videos I'm going to make is a shorter series covering some of the most common questions that I've seen crop up in the comment sections of our previous two videos, um, forums around the internet, on our own forums at PSU.com, and elsewhere. There's a lot of people playing Fallout 4, obviously, and a lot of people wondering just how some of this more nebulous settlement stuff actually works. Oh, darn it. Missed that one. <laughs> so, I'm going to start this video with one of the topics I see come up, come up the most, which is the concept of power. Uh, specifically, how do you generate power, how do you run power to your important devices, how is power split, and then some of the more advanced notions or advanced concepts. Um, how can we run power in a more efficient way, right? How can we run it to devices in a way that requires less uh, build materials and makes use of all the functions available to us? So let's start with the basics of power, right? Your first instinct when the game has you build turrets and other things to raise your defense rating, or lights, what have you, is going to be to build a generator. And you have to have a generator. This is the source of all your power. Whether you build a small generator that produces three units, a medium that produces five, a large that produces ten, or even a windmill like the one I've got up there installed on my roof giving three units of natural energy. Kind of expensive, but at least it's aesthetically pleasing. So let's do a quick demonstration, right? Initially, when you're starting out your settlement, a small generator is generally going to do you just fine, because we just need to provide power to some of our more basic items, like turrets or a radio beacon. So we'll craft a small generator, and we now have a source for three units of power. So let's say we want to hook up a turret. Not these, because they're autonomous, but maybe this shotgun turret. As you can see, the turret requires two units of power, and it's not currently receiving any, so it just hangs limp. But to run those two units of power from our generator to the turret, we simply look at the generator, or the turret, we can start in either end, hit triangle to attach a wire, and run it to the object in question. Triangle again, and we're set. The turret's now operational, and we're using two of the three units of power provided by our generator. Uh, if we were to hook up something that required one unit of power, like a construction light, we'd be able to power that as well with a second wire coming off the generator. But anything that requires more than that, like another two units of power or something even more, like five, it's not going to function. We're already running too much power to this one turret. Now let's talk a little bit about copper wires. From what I can tell, you need exactly one piece of copper in your junk inventory in order to create a wire. And the wires themselves do have a max range. You'll see when I pick up the shotgun turret and try to move it about here, 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 and we lost it. Back here it's good, and we lost it again. So right about here is about the maximum distance you're going to get from any of your copper wires. This, at first, kind of calls to mind, well, crap, now I need to build a ton of generators all over my camp and try to hide them a little bit so they're not as obvious. Now it's getting expensive because we're building so many of these little guys. What are we going to do, right? Well, that's where pylons and power conduits come in. So let's store this wire and come back to it in just a second. Let's say we want to have the turret guarding my front entrance, which is the gate right here. You know, let's dial it back just in case. Alright, so now when any raiders come up the main road and try to penetrate my fortress through the front gate, they're going to run into that shotgun turret. But we need to run power, and this is too far of a distance for one copper wire to cover. Now here's where pylons come into play. Go to the power category, connectors and switches, and now you see the basic pylon requires copper, wood, ceramic, and steel, but minimal amounts of all four of those. Essentially, the pylon is just a bridge point, and that goes for whether you have this small pylon or this large one, like I have up here on my rooftop. It's really just a bridge point to allow you to hook up multiple wires and send them in multiple directions, channeling all the power from the original source, which is your generator. So we can put this pylon right about here. We'll cut the distance in half. Now we'll run a wire from the generator to our pylon. The pylon now possesses the same three units of power that our generator has, and we can carry that to our turret. Just like before, if I wanted to build a smaller object to use up that last one unit of power, like, for example, a construction light. Let's see if I can build one. Nope, uh, missing a little bit of steel. 
But if I did have enough steel to make it, we could set it right here, run an additional wire from the pylon to the construction light, and we'd be good. That'd be operational as well. So pylons are important for that reason. They allow you to sort of intelligently send power from one generator or even multiple generators. You know, I could build a couple more here and kind of have a generator farm going. You run those wires to even a single pylon or multiple pylons, and they essentially act as bridge points for any power coming through their way. Power conduits function in a similar manner, but have an extra bonus that we can take advantage of. So we're still in the workshop menu, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we have a 10 unit generator, the largest you can build, running power to a large power pylon, and that's sending power in a bunch of different directions. It's sending it out to my laser turret, which is guarding the front entrance there. It's sending it over the top of the house toward my crop field. Check that out quick. There's that same wire, <laughs> another pylon. You can use multiple bridge points, sending it to a couple laser turrets up here on this defense post, guarding the south wall of my field. But that large power pylon, I'll just run back to the front entrance quick, is also sending power to a power conduit right here attached to my custom shack wall. So here it is, the little power conduit. You'll find those under connectors and switches as well. They're just in here a little bit. And there's a few forms. They've got this wall-friendly form, a form that's better for placing on the ground, and then this ceiling fixture. So what does the power conduit do? Well, for one thing, it acts as a bridge point just like your pylon. So you can run copper wires to a power conduit. It's going to take all the units of power that are available to it, and then you can run wires from there, sending it to more conduits or more pylons or to the device that you actually want to send power to. But they also do something else, and a pretty important function that makes your life a little bit easier. I will say that this is where our knowledge of the game, and mine in particular, does start to wane a little bit, and the community is starting to figure these things out and getting a better handle on things, but here's what we know about power conduits. They will provide power to any device within the connected network that that power conduit is hooked up to. And I don't mean connected network in terms of wires, I mean connected network in terms of tiles. So we have these shack walls that are linked together by the game system. And inside the upper level, the for, uh, lower level of my fortress, those walls are connected to shack floors to make kind of a makeshift second level. These are all part of the same grid. And because of that, this power conduit is sending power to this lamp, this light bulb, and even inside here to this television. So it's sending three units of power into my base to help power these objects. Where our knowledge starts to get a little fuzzy is, is how exactly that functions, because we know it's supposed to send things that are explicitly connected within the same structure. For example, I'll head up here to my upper level. I'll head up into the double-decker house, and you'll see that I built a power conduit and attached it to the wall here, taking three units of power directly from the windmill. So there's that cable and it's running into here. So this power conduit, just by virtue of being attached to my wall, is running power to this light bulb, this light bulb, and this ceiling fan. This headlamp is also receiving power, which I think it's receiving power from this pylon, or excuse me, this conduit all the way down here. Because it doesn't make sense that I'd be getting power from that three unit windmill when there's already three objects turned on inside the house. But this is where it gets a little fuzzy, right? At first blush, this lamp here doesn't seem to be part of the same network that this conduit would be able to send power to. It's, you know, kind of too far away. It's multiple structures off base from the rest of them. So how exactly is that receiving power? Well, my theory is that the game looks at interconnected objects. So you don't necessarily have to snap things together the way the game kind of tells you to with how sticky they are. But rather, if you just have objects intersecting each other, like, for example, my metal wall is intersecting this house here at this point, the house that was built by Bethesda, not me. Because of that, the TV inside the house is still receiving power thanks to that conduit. Last but not least, there is a distance requirement when it comes to using a conduit to transfer power. We'll use the TV as an example. We'll pick it up. And you know, if you remember, that the conduit was right about here on the outside of that wall. So if we walk this way from that conduit, we lose the power right there. That's back and lost it. Back 
Back. <laughs> and we've lost it again. And the same thing if we go this way. We still have it. We still have power. We still have... And it's gone. Back, briefly. And at this point, it's probably actually receiving power from this conduit that's attached over here. But there's the interesting thing about it, right? I mean, here, I'm just holding the TV aloft, so it really isn't a part of any connecting structure, and yet the game's help menu tells us that that is a requirement, that the conduit sends things through the same structure. So it's probably based in some terms on whether your tiles are connected, whether they're intersecting each other, or even whether you're in the kind of open space that's being um, covered or consumed by your structures. And then, of course, there is that proximity requirement. You need to be close enough to a conduit to receive power from it. Generally, I don't think you'll face many, too many cases where you have to deal with those finer points. The basic thing to remember is that pylons will help you connect your wires to new points and spread them across your camp. Conduits will do the same thing, but also send power to any objects within the structure they're attached to. Oh, hello. Alright, well that's my overview of power and generators and how they function in Fallout 4 Settlement. So please uh, continue to leave comments, like in the comment section of this video, and ask me any questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks for taking the time, guys.